there's a highway on the other side of the bay. It's called 880, and it's horrible. That's where all the trucks are and the potholes. And I swear the lanes are a half a foot <laughs> thinner than on you know any other road. And it's just you know you could be Mr. Zen Buddhist, and when you get on that road, man, blood pressure goes up. You start getting stressed out. You become part of the problem. You're getting mad at other drivers, and it's just it's crazy. And I do all I can. First of all, I do all I can to stay off of highways, let alone the worst ones in the Bay Area. And 880 is absolutely the worst highway in the Bay Area. Now, on this side of the of the water, which locals call the peninsula, and if you're from out of town, you'd either say Silicon Valley. But in Silicon Valley, the worst highway is Highway 101. And my house sits equidistance between 101 and this other highway, 280. And pretty much 90% of all my traveling <laughs> I do on 280 because you have the mountains to the left of you or to the right, depending if you're going north or south. You can put, um, maybe we just call that a ridge. It's not really mountains. It's 2,200 feet above sea level, so we'll call it more of a ridge. And it just, even when there's traffic, it just feels better because... On one side, you have just the green, beautiful ridge, um, and it's good. And I, you know, I think a lot about being in traffic because I'm not, <laughs> though I used to be. I used to do a lot of commuting, and that got me to thinking over the, what, what's been going on in the stock market over the past five or six months, which is basically nothing. And so with that, I came up with a theme that I want to share with you in this weekend's podcast and talk about what's probably most important for everyone and your portfolios. So with that, let's jump into the theme. So I'm going to call my theme noise. And this is a picture of 880. <laughs> it, it looks like that about 20 hours a day. You can get on 880 at 6 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night, and I swear it looks this bad, even on a Sunday. So how do we get rid of the noise? And that's a big part of why I design and built market probability is to delete as much of the noise as we can. And it turns out you can delete a lot of the noise because if you don't delete a lot of the noise, you kind of end up like this guy, either dishing it out like, man, what's up? You're in my way. Or you're on the receiving end of someone being stressed out. And what I think people really want is not to be him. Of course, he doesn't want to act that way. He's not like, hey, I want to get in the car this morning and be a jackhole. Um, but he is. What we really want is to kind of be the guy on the bike. We want to be the guy looking at the traffic jam, other people kind of wondering, you know, what's going on? Where is it going? We want to be the guy on the bike. So the question is, how do you become the guy on the bike? And so let's look at um, up-to-date, very specific charts to kind of show this to you. And I got some pretty cool charts I want to show you. So this chart right here is a five-month Japanese candlestick price chart of the S&P 500. And each one of those lines represents whether the stock market ended higher or lower for the day. So if it's black, that means it ended lower from where it opened up. You can see some tails both on top and on the bottom. And that shows you the low or the high for the day. And if it looks kind of like a balloon or an empty box, that means the stock market ended higher than where it opened for the day. So a lot of information on here. You see tails. You see big swings. There's a lot of information on this price chart. And this is five months. Now, from top to bottom, from highest point to lowest point, is about 4%. 4%. So not that much. And just so we put things into perspective, here in May is lifetime highs, right? The universe is 14 billion, 14 and a half billion years old. Planet Earth is four and a half billion years old. And this is the highest the S&P 500 has ever gotten in that time. So being 4% off from the uh, universe's lifetime high, not that big of a deal, but we make it a big deal. Now, I can make it simpler and easier. I can delete a lot of the noise and just show you what the S&P closed at each day. This will relieve some stress. I mean, I can go back to this, this to this, that to that. So clearly, it relieves some stress simply by deleting the open, 
the high, the low, and just going with the closing price of the day. <sighs> you just want to breathe easier. We can delete more noise. I can zoom out. I can show you 16 months of the S&P 500 of what it's closed at each day for 16 months. Just looking at a price chart, just showing you the close of the day. And this should bring in more calmness. This should delete more noise for your brain. You don't have to make as many decisions, which you do not want to make a lot of decisions. And the decisions you want to make, they should be very strategic ones. So if we can zoom out 16 months ago, oh, all right, yeah, it's, it's going up. Good, that's what I needed to know. Okay, we're good. And I can even do something even like cleaner upperly. I can zoom way out. Now this is still looking at 16 months, but now what I'm doing is I'm only giving you the closing price for each week going back 16 months. So now I'm really deleting out a lot of information, a lot of information that you really didn't need to know anyway. And so this is what's hitting people. It just keeps hitting them and keeps hitting them and keeps hitting them. And, and they have decision fatigue. And because they have decision fatigue, they do one of two things. They do nothing, which is a decision, or they do something equally dangerous and just in and out, in and out, in and out, this, that, oh, we got to do all this stuff. But it's hurting their portfolios. It's hurting their future. It's hurting their security. And so one of the reasons why I built market probability, that strategy, is to say, hey, let's just get the, the direction right. And if you get the direction right, you get everything right. And this is not me that has come up with this idea. I did not invent this idea. There is 50 years of research that shows, in fact, Price direction is the biggest indicator of future returns. Not value, not deep value, not fundamental information, not yield, but price direction. It beats everything, even deep value investing. I didn't do the research. Much smarter people than me did the research. It beats everything. So notice when there's traffic. Notice how you can avoid traffic. Notice when there's traffic in your life. And notice when you're the traffic. This is probably the thing I want you to notice the most in your life, and that's the takeaway for this week, is you are part of the traffic. You are the traffic. So if you don't want to be in a traffic jam, stop being the traffic. If you don't want to be freaking out about the stock market barely moving up or down sideways Lee. I make up words on this podcast, then stop looking. Get market probability or build a system that can delete 95% of the noise so when the signal actually does arrive, you're ready for it. And it's the signal that you want. But please remember, you're part of the traffic. And so if the last month of the Grexit or China going up 100% and falling 50% or Janet raising interest rates potentially. You're part of it. Just, just kind of say no to it. Do the Nancy Reagan thing. Just say no. Right? Just say no to the news and CNBC and Jim Cramer and the 12 newsletters. Now, if you got the newsletters, I totally get it. They are amazing storytellers. Some of the best storytellers in the country Right, stock investment newsletters. And I'm telling you, I read these things and I, I want to go out and buy, you know, these companies. Even when I see the price falling, because they write these stories so amazingly well about why you should buy the the deep oil drilling company Diamond Offshore, even though it's fallen. Right? Or why you should buy um, I'm trying to think Exxon's fallen right now or Chevron's falling right now. Like why you should buy them. Like the, the storytelling is amazing. But remember, just remember, and this is the big takeaway, notice when you're part of the traffic. Notice when you're part of the noise. Hey guys, I'm so glad you're with me. This is just another step in helping you secure your future and secure your portfolio. Until next time, this is RC Peck. Hey guys, thanks so much for being here with my podcast. Uh, I love having um, you you're, you part of this. I love getting the comments when people reply back and let Patty or me know how they're doing. Hey, and one of the best things that I've done over the last 18 years, and I started my company in June of 1998, is introducing people to market probability 
and getting their portfolio connected into market probability so that they're part of every major market move. And you know, the, the bottom line is nothing beats the stock market returns over any 10 year period, even over any five year period. It beats 99% of all investments on the planet, beats bonds, beats private equity, beats venture capital, beats hedge funds, beats hedge funds, beats real estate, unlevered real estate, beats commodities, beats cur cur currencies. It is, it's kind of like your free ride. It beats everything. And the thing you just, just there's just one thing you want to, you know, make sure that doesn't happen. You do not want any catastrophic losses. This is not something I made up. The best investors on the planet never take huge losses. And yet Wall Street wants you to take your full loss. Conventional investor investment advisors, they want you to take the full loss of the market. I don't. So parts you may notice wanting to have that straightforward approach to growing your money. And the answer is market probability. And I will even do it for you. Some of you may want to do it on your own. Totally understand. And some of you may just say, look, tell me what it is, or I know what it is. Just do it for me. I've changed the minimums. I got reconnected back to my purpose of helping people and making their lives better. And when you have interest, and that may be now already, st the next step is straightforward. You just email Patty, P-A-T-T-Y at Ferris Wealth and say, hey, let me know the information. Let me know what's next. And you can just put money management in the subject line and just give her your contact information and she'll reach out to you. Super straightforward. You guys take care of yourself. I'll speak to you soon.